Hi, this is Quad, and in this video, I want to tell you about long histology. So let's start from this. This is white space, so there's nothing there or air. And this is purplish, and this thing is cartilage. So this is actually one of your proximal airway. Could be trachea or bronchus. Next to this system, you find another thing like that this is your pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery and this air pipe will travel together and in addition to having these two you can also have very small almost invisible lymphatic vessel traveling all together what about the vein pulmonary vein doesn't travel with this uh, structure but it has its own independent path so let's talk about the difference between pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein here is artery and here is vein both have same outer structure and same inner structure called tunica externa and tunica intima tunica externa intima are both connective tissue. Within the tunica intima, this thing that surrounds the blood are the endothelial cells. So, so far, they are similar. Both have connective tissue, tunica externa, tunica intima, and uh, within the tunica intima is the pipe made by the endothelial cells that carry the blood. Both do also have the medial area, and these are the tunica media. And tunica media is also connective tissue, but this is the smooth muscle. There is more smooth muscle in artery than in vein. So tunica media of the artery is thicker than that of vein. And tunica media here has inside called internal elastic membrane. It's the same here, tunica media has this inside layer called internal elastic membrane. This allows your blood vessels to be kind of elastic, move around and recoil. But the artery has also the same thing outside of the tunica media called external elastic membrane. So tunica media is surrounded by two elastic membranes in artery, but just one supporting it in the vein. Okay, now let's go back to the lung. Now, if you look into this area you usually see cells like this and these are the columnar epithelial cells um, they have cilia move stuff out the entry your mouth knows also the epithelial cells here will have other cells underneath it and these are the submucosal bronchial glands glands that sit behind the epithelial cells and secrete mucus in the system in addition to these glands, you also have cells next to the columnar epithelial cells that also secrete mucus into the airway space. Okay, just like the arteries and veins, the pipes also have smooth muscles around it. You need muscles because these muscles can control the size of the pipe. For example, people going through asthma uh, will have these muscles uh, thickened and the airway constricted obstructing the airflow if you keep going down the lung pipes after branch 16 or so there are 23 branches total you'll start seeing the air sacs more towards the end and uh, these are the alveoli and they look like this you have a cell here another cell here maybe another cell here and these cells that surround this airspace are called the type 1 pneumocytes. They are the uh, epithelial cells, basically. And here you have the type 2 pneumocytes. Uh, let me go one step back. Um, here you have a lot of columnar cells, right? So here are the columnar cells with cilia. But as you go down the uh, lung branches, the cells will become uh, cuboidal. And as you go down even more, the cells are now squamous and eventually these squamous cells will surround the airspace which is the alveoli airspace and here you have the type 1 pneumocytes that I introduced in this cartoon. Type 2 pneumocytes are 
uh, found after you go down enough branch when you start seeing the alveoli again branch 16 is a good um, differentiating branch type 2 pneumocytes secrete surfactant to keep this space not collapsed type 2 pneumocytes are also progenitor cells so when type 1 pneumocytes these are the stable cells die type 2 pneumocytes can make new replacement for that type 1 pneumocyte a lung collapsing means that these cells now will touch each other so this cell is here this cell is here here's a type 2 pneumocyte the airspace is collapsed and if you have a lot of this then the histology will look like a cluster of cells no inflammation and without fibrosis and other problems and this might look confusing but don't worry this is just a bunch of cells coming together due to collapsing now let's talk about gas exchange here is the endothelial cell of capillary this is one cell and this cell surrounds the space where red blood cells can move through and the size of a capillary is usually one blood cell thick gas will go in and out of this system and the blood cells will help clear the gas from this region and deliver it to the rest of the body here there is one alveoli and one capillary and in reality a single capillary touches multiple alveoli and the gas exchange can happen in uh, many directions and also the cells in between are called interstitial cells these could include tissue resident macrophages monocytes and others that make up the lung structure finally let me tell you about a few general ways lungs can be messed up the first proximal pipe problems proximal pipes are trachea bronchus they usually have this cartilage and problems in the columnar epithelial cells leads to no cilia less mucus in the area and this is a good place for now bacteria and others to infect number two airspace problem all this is airspace bad things can get to the airspace and cause problem there are two main types of bad things first liquid in edema the airspace will be filled with liquid maybe your heart is having a problem filling of the space with liquid is going to decrease the amount of oxygen that can get to your blood system and the second category is pathogen these are more bacterial or others because these pathogen should be able to live in open space on their own you'll have a lot of a multi-nucleated cells neutrophils that come to the region so if you look at the histology slides you see a lot of neutrophils one good thing about airspace problem is that once you solve the underlying problem you will end up with the normal lung function but on the other hand if you have a problem in your interstitial this is the third one cells like pneumocytes or interstitial cells then the lung structure itself is now in trouble and this can be caused by viral infection the interstitial cells will go through hypertrophy maybe fibrosis and you will have a bad lung structure even if you fix the underlying problem you may end up living your rest of your life with problematic lung structure and because the infection is usually viral neutrophils won't be there but you will see things like lymphocytes and others that fight the infection honeycomb lung disease it's called honeycomb because the interstitial cells will get so big and so thick a lot of fibrosis and eventually start making cartilage if you look at the lung specimen of these patients you will see something like honeycomb in their lobules this is because the interstitial cells are creating that rigid structure and opposite of this is emphysema people with emphysema will have overactive uh, cell digestion and these cells are the interstitial cells so the interstitial cells are really thin and if you look at their specimen you will see a lot of air spaces but almost no interstitial cell size and the fourth general lung problem can be vascular there can be infarction complete blockage of a blood flow maybe pulmonary artery is blocked there also another way by bronchial artery that come directly from aorta so this has a good amount of oxygen if you block this then again the cells that receive 
nutrients from that vessel will die. But you don't have to completely block to cause problem. You can also have high blood pressure, like hypertension. Muscle cells in tunica media can get thicker, eventually narrowing the flow of the blood. And finally, you can have problems in your capillary. If capillaries are inflamed or go through issues, then capillaries can leak and blood cells can just get to all this airspace. And when you see that in the histology picture, you see a lot of red blood cells floating around and you also see neutrophils and other immune cells in this area to uh, clear out those blood cells and the broken capillaries. Finally, the fifth category of general lung problem is basically some mass. This could be cancer or some kind of mineral deposition. If you live in a place with a lot of asbestos and all that, there's a silica stuff can get to your lung cells and your lung cells will start accumulating them. But your body doesn't know how to get rid of asbestos and other uh, minerals. So you'll end up having this region with a lot of uh, deposition from this and leading to some kind of a mass. Mass prevent lung from doing its job. And also there's another type of uh, mass. These are the mass called the granuloma. When you have infection, like airspace infection, the infection can eventually lead to tuberculosis and a lot of macrophages and all that will get to the site of the infection and they start to fuse macrophages, lymphocytes, neutrophils, all that. And this thing becomes granuloma and granuloma looks like under the x-ray, some kind of a mass, almost like metastatic lung cancers. Well, and finally, uh, since I talked about the x-ray, if airspace problems can be contained, then you will see these nodular things in x-ray. These are the immune cells doing its job and containing the issue in an area. And this area ends up looking like a nodule in the x-ray. But if the infection is pretty bad, then your immune cells can contain them and the infection can spread to that entire lobule. It's not gonna go to the next lobule because here you have a septum. And third, x-ray manifestation could be some kind of a hazy spreading of things. And this can happen when there is viral infection. So what happens is that all these interstitial cells can be infected, resulting in that hazy look in an x-ray.